Hi there, welcome. Welcome friends, welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be here with you today and so glad you're out there. And I always have this wonderful feeling that we have new viewers, so to you new viewers, welcome, welcome, welcome. And we have a regular much loved guest today. She's been gone too long, but Deborah Ray is back. She's been doing some traveling and things. She's supposed to be on here once a month, actually. I'm so glad she's back. And um, I, I purposely, because of new viewers, I got her credentials here. She belongs to the Society of uh, Medical Technologists um, and Pathologists and the Florida Society of Clinical Pathologists. She has a BS in Medical te Technology uh, from the University of Kentucky and an MS from Immunology, the University of uh, Louisville. And she's known as the First Lady of Health and uh, was for a long time in Healthy Talk Radio, Healthy Talk TV, and we are absolutely honored that she's a part of this program once a month. Today we're going to talk about an all-important subject of uh, Alzheimer's disease. There are studies going on all the time to try to pinpoint what brings this wretched, wretched disease into the lives of so many people and what it does to their families. So I'll be ready to learn a little bit about that. We've been working on that. And I'm going to join Stephanie, and we're going to make honey lemon tea biscuits. Now, you real girly girls, uh, you, you like this kind of thing like me. I love to go to a tea house and uh, all the little interesting food they have, you know, the scones and the uh, cucumber sandwiches, all those little girl things. And so that's what this uh, particularly, particular cookie is about, and we'll taste it and see if it's good. Uh, before I join Steph, though, the Too Blessed to be Stressed cookbook, uh, the author of this, Debbie Deborah Cody, has been on recently and fixed a couple of recipes, and these books are flying out the doors. So um, we've hit on something that you really like. Uh, she tested everything in here. It's less than 20 minutes, and a wonderful variety, a lot of good, uh, good interesting things to read as you are cooking. Uh, the lady has sold over 400,000 books, not just cookbooks, but books of every kind. She's a great writer. So um, we're offering this today for that gift of at least $20 to homekeepers. The information's right there on your screen. Uh, a lot of you like to use your credit cards or debit cards, and if you do, that's 1-800-229-0059 is the telephone number for that. And the address on the screen, too, if you're like me and you still write checks. <laughs> uh, Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I'm here with a girl who never writes a check, right? Not very. Mm, I can't remember. Well, no, not really. <laughs> Last night, I, I wrote out a check to the electric company. And oh. they keep putting in there, you can do this online. Right? They're this. like, lady. They're trying to get me. <laughs> But <laughs> you know, there's young people and they're like, what is this that came in? Yeah, no, nope. <laughs> what, what's a check? What's a check? Yes. All right. Okay. So honey lemon tea biscuits. So I have, I'm going to tell you what I have. I have two okay. cups of flour. I have a teaspoon of salt. I have a tablespoon of sugar. I have four teaspoons of baking powder, a half a cup of butter at room temperature. I have three quarter cup of half and half, a tablespoon of honey one half lemon squeezed, but we also went the ahead zest. and added some zest because I tasted what we made earlier. So I'm just saying. <laughs> I think she didn't like it. Deborah Ray took a bite, but she's very she's, kind. Yeah, she's very kind. Very kind. So I'm we're not, we're not sure. No. We're not sure about her answer. All right. Okay, so we're just going to mix all the dry ingredients. So that's the flour, the salt, the sugar, the baking. Isn't it though like a really tea house? Oh, yeah. The only thing, have you ever... You've ever gone to a tea house, I'm sure. The only thing I won't do is when they bring out those ha hats and want to... Oh, come on. That's the fun part. I don't want to put on a come hat. On. I don't know whose head it's okay, been on. Okay, no. Take a hat. Yeah, if you take, take a, a hat, hat that's okay. fun. Don't wear other hats. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's just dangerous. That's, that's a good idea. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to whisk this stuff together to get it really incorporated. And then I'm going to add the butter... And I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to use my hands for that, which I washed. And when you see um, the ingredients in this, if it didn't have the lemon and the honey, it it's wouldn't have any flavor. Yeah, it's just like a bland shortbread. Yeah, shortbread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to mix this up and get coarse little crumbs. 
And then we're gonna add in the honey and the lemon and the lemon zest. And then the half and half is last. Uh, last. And then I'm just gonna roll it out and I'm gonna uh, put some flour on the table, roll it out. And there's a cup in that um, ha in that side cabinet that I right used here. as a cookie cutter. Yeah. A very pretty. Yeah. And this is the size that it will be. And I, I, I even brought a teapot and some teacups. Yes, so we can look classy. Now this teacup, okay. I'm sure a viewer gave us this years and years ago. It's gorgeous and it looks like uh -huh. that you've used it. Yeah. Okay. That's my teapot though. That's your... It's got little, kind of little feet on it. I love it. You know what's funny with the two of us? You're like so classy and ladylike and demure and I'm such a redneck compared to her. <laughs> That's why we <laughs> we do so well together. Okay, so that's all the dry ingredients and the butter. And I'm gonna put honey, which I would, I, I, I. You tasted ah, them. My brain, my, I would probably use even a little more honey. I mean, if you want a really soft, soft flavor, like that's enough, but I think. Then I do would, it, do it the way. Yeah. This should be yeah. greased, I take it. No. No? No, ma'am. Why is this here? Um, that's for the next show. Oh, okay. We'll put it out of, out of sight, out of mind. Okay. And then my other, my only little other thing is I would not use all of this initially because I did that earlier, and then I had to add more Made flour it moist. because it was way too wet. Mm -hmm. I couldn't knead it. It, tell, it says to knead, and there was no kneading that dough. It was way too okay. wet. Okay. So let's mix this up. Actually, this basic recipe, there's no end to the places you could go sure. with, the, with the flavors you want, but. The lemon and the tea just, I don't know, it grabbed me. Yeah, well, you're a lemon fan. I'm That's a lemon why. person. I yeah. think cinnamon, minus the lemon, in, um, minus the lemon, you could put uh, cinnamon in here, mm -hmm. and that would be almost like a snickerdoodle. Mm -hmm. Just a little yeah, there's, bit. Uh, more. Yeah, so there, many there's ways. There's no end go. to the kind of flavoring you yeah. can just put in this basic. Just get the kids in the kitchen and say, what do you want to put in a cookie? I went on a cruise about three years ago, and they had high tea in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Guess who was there? Not Besides all my, you? Not all my friends went, but... Who? I went. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I thought you meant somebody <laughs> famous. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm going to put some flour down here. Make sure you put plenty of flour down, because my first batch this morning, even though I Got rolled sticky? it out nicely, it stuck. I had to start all over again. Okay. And I'm going to start pouring this tea so that we okay. can. And it's really tea. It's not even hot, just hot water. How no, exciting. No, it's not, um, not colored water. It's, wow. It's the real thing. We are fancy today, folks. Well, if you got a tea cookie, you need a cup of tea. Yeah. How, how thin do you roll this? It's pretty, they're pretty it's thin. It's pretty thin, yeah. Yeah. So let me. Well, I'll put this over here so I can get out the ones that we did make and not very often we roll things around here. you um you weren't really nutty about this right not real nutty <laughs> <laughs> not super uh, crazy but you taste it tastes like a biscuit yeah i i i just think you need more oh you need more flavoring. lemon and honey even, in it yeah. you know what even i would might use is lemon extract Mm -hmm. It just really needs more of a kick than just that little bit of lemon. It just tastes like a biscuit. You put some jelly on it and yeah. some butter. Yeah. And so then you just we're honest. If we think it's not bam. good, we tell you. And if I you think have it's a, a good biscuit. If you have a cookie cutter, that mm -hmm. would even be better. But I'm just using a glass. I think it's a good biscuit. And you, you can see the glass. Okay. And, you know, we give our recipes away. But before we talk about that, can I talk about something else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because... We get the most wonderful notes and things, you know, email and, and in the mail. Because of the recipes, you good people, you take time to, you know, encourage us. And um, Stephanie is facing breast cancer, and in the next few weeks we'll have um, a lot of treatment. Mm -hmm. Surgery and treatment. So I'm telling you this with her permission that we want you to pray. Thank God for Christian television. Thank yes. God for Christian radio. You can pull together the saints to pray. And I know how much you love Stephanie because I get it in my computer and through the mail. So um, 
I'm glad that you give us permission. Oh, well, thanks. To talk about it. Mm -hmm. And pray that it'll just go so smoothly. God's got it. I have no... Oh, God's got it. One day I'll tell you the story how I found it, and you'll know God's yeah. got it. Okay? Yeah, we'll just, we'll just set up a time for an interview <laughs> yeah. with that when it's mm -hmm. over. But will you please um, pray for her? And I know a lot of you out there will. I know that. So... Mm -hmm. um, just be aware of that there's probably not anyone we're talking to right now who has not been touched by breast cancer or someone in your family. I know my daughter's had it, yes. my niece's okay. had it, mm -hmm. and a lot of you good folks. So, uh, And you remember what it's like. You remember what it's like when a loved one goes through it. So pull down that memory and, and add it to the prayer. It'll give it a little more fervency, okay? All right, if you want this recipe that we semi... <laughs> just you want to add a little flavoring to yeah. but it but the texture is the texture really is good. great yeah, yeah. uh information is coming up on your screen and the best way the quickest way is email or the address you can write to us and we'll send it to you that way okay coming up and um we'll get it right out to you If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. So happy to have... Uh, Deborah Ray with us today, and um, to be honest with you, I'm waiting for Stephanie to get out of here. Um, we're going to put up uh, a graphic of Stephanie and our address, because I would like for you to flood her with um, cards of, of uh, Prayers, inspiration. Wishes. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, absolutely. so it's it's on the screen right now, and we will bring it up again at the end of the program. That. It would be so great if uh, we could just give her an avalanche of encouragement and prayers, okay? All right. Okay. So good to see you again. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. Um, <coughs> you've been traveling a lot, I know, and um, finally your schedule permitted you to come. It's a great topic. It's a mm. great topic. We're going to talk about Alzheimer's disease, and epidemiologists tell us that they expect that 80% of Americans, by the time they reach the age of 80, will have some form of memory loss, Alzheimer's, senile dementia, and that's like, what? What? I mean, that, that's an 80%. 80%. And countries that we would consider to be, oh, you know, not nearly as rich in resources and opportunities have a fraction of that amount. So it's kind of like, you know, why do, why is one in six children in this country have a behavior or learning disability and why do we now see this epidemic as we age and unfortunately we're seeing it at earlier and earlier ages of Alzheimer's? I have a gentleman scheduled to come on very soon whose beautiful, vibrant wife mm -hmm. uh, diagnosed at the age of 50. Wow. wow. And she lived another 17 years and um, I think most people are somewhat familiar and what it does to the family and right. it's I, I do remember this a book I read where a Presbyterian pastor in Miami was stricken with it in his 50s I think he's a wonderful man of God and um, when the doctor told him the diagnosis he and his wife were sitting there the doctor said I wish I could tell you you have cancer yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely it's it's just the, the epitome. There, but, you know, the, the, apparently their, their, their mind, their soul, mm -hmm. although we know that things like music and, and certainly prayer reach them, mm -hmm. they don't recognize the family members and, and what, what a challenge for family members to mm -hmm. think, you know, whether it's 17 years or 27 or 37 that they might have to deal with that as their, you know, as family members or their parents or themselves age. Mm -hmm. The guest I have coming on shortly um within the next few days she lived 17 more years after it was diagnosed and the difficulty of taking her car keys away and just these these milestones you know right. now 
you sent me some information which you right. could probably explain a whole lot better than I can. Something called insulin resistance. They're right. looking very closely at uh, a relationship to, of course, we've got two types of diabetes right. already, but right. here's something else where insulin is involved. In fact, this research has been going on at Brown University and other universities across the country because we are, of course, seeing an epidemic of type 2 diabetes in this mm -hmm. country at earlier ages. The fastest growing group of type 2 diabetics in this country is teenagers. But now Brown University researchers tell us that there may be a third type, diabetes type 3, that may be either identical to or similar to or connected to, uh, to Alzheimer's because the main fuel for the cells of our brain is glucose, is sugar. And if those cells don't take up that fuel of sugar, uh, we see just like with type 2 diabetes in our bodies where we see um, you know, all the signs and symptoms of type 2 diabetes, uh, you know, heart disease, high blood pressure, sugar levels that, that don't respond to more and more higher levels of insulin, then kidney problems, failure to heal wound problems, eye problems, that maybe Alzheimer's or some forms of memory impairment are connected to type 3 diabetes, but researchers and physicians aren't looking for it, so they're not recognizing it. But there's a blood test, a very simple blood test that we can ask our doctors tomorrow to do for us. It's just an insulin level, a fasting insulin level and if it's more than five, that's a sort of like a 10-year marker that you may be well on the way to developing maybe type 2 or type 3 diabetes. The good news is, is that Harvard researchers have, disco have discovered through the Harvard nurses and the Harvard physician study that 95% of that can be reversed with some simple lifestyle changes, very simple lifestyle changes. You know, that is such good news, but it's, I think it just goes over people's heads. Doesn't they? They want a pill. Exit. Exactly. They, it's they not want a pill. pill. Um, it's not a pill. No. I don't know if Americans are addicted to prescriptions, but I read yesterday that the average American's on four point something right. prescriptions. If you're over the age of 65. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, what? Because somebody's taken yours and somebody's taken mine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, I caught something you said a while ago. Is it that there's so much sugar that the brain can't process it? That the brain's cells have become insulin resistant, just like the pancreas in type 2 diabetes becomes insulin resistant. So the sugar levels get higher and higher in the brain, and they, um, you know, they produce deleterious effects. Um, there, there are molecules that then start to damage the brain. And of course, we know with Alzheimer's after autopsy, um, and, you know, after That's death, when they can really... They can see those fibrils and those tangles. So it may be, um, you know, it's too early to tell yet, but there's no downside. There's no downside to treating it as if it were type 3 diabetes because all we do is get all the bad fats out of our diet, eat no processed sugars, eat as many fresh fruits and vegetables as we can each day, eat a reasonable amount of protein, get good fats in our diet. If we eat a grain, make it a whole grain, get reasonable activity, exercise each mm -hmm. day, mind the stress, prayer, you know, meditation. There's so many mm -hmm. ways we None can do None of these cost you anything. Exactly, exactly. I was going to show you this, Deborah. This is from the Time Magazine. Yeah. And it indicates that exercise is absolutely a cure. Right. And I, I believe that. I believe that because I... I see people my age who, who don't, never have right. exercise. I have regularly, I'd like to do more mm -hmm. and all, but uh, I hardly ever let a day go by without getting the heart rate up, you know, aerobically. So that doesn't cost you, you don't have to have any machines no. to exercise at all. You have to get your little tushy right off of the couch and because it not only helps the muscles mm -hmm. and your circulation, it helps your brain as well. And you Exercise can carry weights if you walk. Absolutely. There's a lot of things that really don't cost anything. You can't walk. You can do it in a chair. You can swim. I mean, there's so many ways that that's, you know, it becomes available to us. I want to go back to the, the, I want to understand the thing in the brain. So there's, there's not enough insulin, right? Right. Our bodies become resistant to the insulin. So the it's not that you don't have enough insulin, correct. but it, body, they're not doing what it's supposed to do. Exactly, exactly. So it's not like type 1 diabetes where the pancreas is not making enough insulin. Mm -hmm. The body continues to make higher and higher levels of insulin. Our cells stop responding to it.
because of the lifestyle choices that we make. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's related to inflammation. I know we've talked about this in, in the past, that whether it's cancer, whether it's heart disease, whether it's stroke, we see high levels of inflammation, not only in people who are obese, but we see high levels of inflammation in people who have memory loss uh, and Alzheimer's. The good news is that can be addressed. Isn't fibromyalgia and lupus that a lot of uh, cause of inflammation? It can be, it mm -hmm. certainly can be. But just two days of inactivity, and think how many Americans think, oh, you know, this weekend, football, whatever, I'm just gonna veg on the couch. Two days of inactivity mm -hmm. can dramatically increase mm -hmm. our inflammation levels. And again, a simple blood test. You can mm -hmm. ask your doctor to do an, a highly sensitive CRP, C-reactive protein, so fasting insulin, CRP blood levels, simple blood test, and you know where you stand. Um, and you can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I always uh, have told audiences across the nation that when you were born, when you popped out of your mommy's womb, God was there. He handed you a free will. Right. And uh, I'm not sure he tinkers with it that much. He gave it to us, you know. And um, But you mentioned the University of Kentucky earlier where I got my baccalaureate degree. Yeah. And there's a wonderful nun study, the study of, of, of nuns there in, in oh, Oysters in Lexington, Kentucky. They have a dramatically different risk of Alzheimer's disease. And of course, they correlate it to not only how they live, the lifestyle, they're more active. They don't tend to eat you know, the fast food choices mm -hmm. that Americans do. But of course, their minds are active. They're active until their 70s and their 80s and their mm -hmm. 90s, and that might be a real preventive measure. That you know, we know that you know whether it's exercise. Jack Lalane at 96, <laughs> yeah, going strong, telling people about your doctor should be writing you a prescription for exercise. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Nurturing, That's challenging. The brain keeps it healthy and talks about reading. Talks about classical music. Uh, some of the music we have today, even in our churches, I. I think it's detrimental, actually. Um, but a good hymnal. A mm -hmm. hymnal is just a wonderful thing to sit down mm -hmm. and read. Mm -hmm. And, you know, many of us talk about, you know, a, a life verse. I love the concept of having a life hymn. Yes, yes. Things like trust and obey. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that just speaks to my heart and my brain. Me too. And uh, it's kind of all wrapped up in those three words. Yes. Um, I, uh, I might have taken this off of what you sent. Um, to balance the blood sugar, eat healthy fats, you've already right. mentioned that, exercise, mm -hmm. uh, take supplements, right. B6, B12, uh, folate, D3, and it also says a pro probiotic enhances the brain-gut relationship. Right, right, because there is, there is a correlation because over 70% of your immune system is in your gut, and what happens in your gut can actually affect how you behave, how you think, how you feel, it's all, you know, there, there's, there's a circle. God well, well Dr. Course. Young has a good product out that we've oh, offered on. Yes, that's on a this. wonderful that's, That surprised me when I read it. Yes. Uh, enhances the brain-gut relationship. Boy, when King David said we're fearfully and wonderfully made, it, there's no end to exploring that. Think about those B vitamins. Uh, British yeah. research now shows us that the vast majority of people who end up becoming type 2 and maybe type 3 diabetic have frank B vitamin deficiencies. Where do we find the B vitamins? We find them in the whole grains. There's not many fast food restaurants <laughs> that are rich in whole grains these right. days or fresh fruits and vegetables. Again, rich sources of the B vitamins, certainly in this country, readily available to us. We just need to be more mindful of eating around mm -hmm. the perimeter of the grocery store to being whole grains and whole fresh fruits and vegetables. Yeah, and let's go over the healthy fats. Yes. Uh, which it's not meat, is it? No. No. Nuts. Walnuts. Yeah. Two tablespoons of walnuts a day gives you your daily dose of healthy fats. Flax really? seed. Uh, avocado. I eat avocados, yeah. Yes. All olive oil. Uh, of course, olive oil is so healthy, they say it's, it's, it's much more than, a, than a, an oil. It's almost a plant juice because it's so really? rich, not only in the healthy fats, but in nutrients. And coconut oil. Absolutely. Yeah. Coconut oil. Okay, we're going to run out of time. Um, this is um, ways to, uh, as far as they know, they don't have all the answers yet on Alzheimer's, but one way to hopefully right. uh, avoid it. Check thyroid and sex hormone levels. Hormones make a difference. Of course, insulin is a hormone, but it's much more than just blood sugar. 
and those those glands all connect. So, so the, that's a test that the doctor takes, right? Simple, simple test, yes. Detox metals. Mm -hmm. um, Mercury can cross that blood-brain barrier. Do I? Do most people have metal in their system? In this country, yes, all we too do. frequently because we've been doing those amalgam fillings for many years, uh, and mercury can actually leach out of that. And of course, then our cookware makes a difference really? as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cooking in glass or something that doesn't leach metal. Uh, what about steel? Uh, stainless steel can be, uh, you know, a, a, a clad. A, a, a steel clad cookware is good, uh, but you want to be careful about some of the, the more soft metals that when you cook things, for example, like tomatoes can actually leach metals into them. Again, you can be tested mm -hmm. in the simplest ways to detox from that. Control stuff lev stress levels. That's where you can pray and talk to the Lord and Absolutely. read Give some psalms. Him. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you, can, um, you can take hold of that. And then the last one, they have um, eight hours of sleep. But Deborah, <laughs> the older I get, my sleep patterns are, and you get, if you wake up in the middle of the night, you know, you need to go to the bathroom or something, and then you can't shut this brain down. You're just thinking of everything you have to do in the next 16 hours. So. But I've started doing a little magnesium at night. You can go to the grocery store or a drugstore, get a green glass bottle of magnesium citrate. You can get it in different flavors. You just want... Uh, you know, just a shot glass, which is two ounces. I use my little fruit of the spirit uh -huh. uh, portion glass. So it's just two tablespoons of magnesium at night will relax your brain, relax your muscles, and it's really been. You a get that in a, a drugstore? Or Absolutely. I just keep it on the uh, you know on the on the door of my refrigerator, and before magnesium. I go to bed, just take out my fruit of the spirit glass and take. Uh, one ounce or two tablespoons of magnesium citrate gives me 285 yeah. milligrams of elemental magnesium, and I sleep through the night. <gasps> Where are you going to get this kind of information, <laughs> friends? And it's absolutely free. And don't forget to exercise. Uh, also, uh, there's a lot of little books. I've got tons of them at home if I'm going to watch TV. Uh, they're called Brain Games, mm -hmm. and uh, they're crossword puzzles. There's all kinds of, uh, of different things that you can do to really, really be proactive. So uh, I hope that a lot of the things we've had to say are helpful to you. I, I know how much you love this lady. And um, I hope you'll take it to the heart because um, sometimes the Lord says, well, what are you going to do about it, you know? So think about that. And please, please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 